Greetings, this is Recurse TV. Hello, my name is Ryan, and I'll be showing you how to make this terminal based Pong game on your Raspberry Pi. I decided to call it XPong. It's written in Python and it uses the Python Cursus module. Cursus is a library of functions that manage an application's display on text based terminals such as the LX terminal which is the default terminal application of the Raspberry Pi, enabling the construction of text user interface applications. If you are wondering where the Cursus name came from, it's actually a pun on the term cursor. The Python module is a fairly simple wrapper over the C programming language functions provided by Cursus. If you are familiar with Cursus programming in C, it's really easy to transfer that knowledge to Python. Okay, enough with that and let's jump right into the code. The source code is available on my GitHub gist and I will post the link to the source code on the description down below. So the first thing you want to do is to open up a terminal and make a directory. You can name it Pong and then change into that directory open up your favorite text editor I'll be using nano so just type nano xpong.py to open it and type in the following codes whenever I write programs I usually like to develop using a top-down approach where I make a sketch using pseudo codes no actual codes yet just words that describe what is going to happen or what needs to happen in the program Alright, so let's begin by defining a main function, which we are going to call later on to start our application. In our main function, of course, the first thing we want to do is to create a new Cursus window. Then we initialize game variables, and then we display a welcome screen and wait for the user to press a key. Next, we enter our game loop. The game loop is the central code of our game split into different parts. Generally, these are initialize, update, and draw. Okay, so inside our game loop, we might want to delete the old ball and the paddles because we assume it's already been drawn in the screen. And then we get the user input and check if the user has pressed Q to quit. Otherwise, we move the player paddle. We then move the computer paddle and then we also move the ball. After that, we check for ball collision. Then we also check if the ball is going off the window. And then we draw the net in the middle, the paddles and the ball. The next thing we do is to check if there is a winner and display it on the screen. And if the user has not press Q to quit and decided to play again, we reset the game variables. However, if the player decides to quit the game, we exit our game loop and clean up before exiting. Now that we are finished designing our game logic, we can now proceed to writing the actual codes. To create a new Curses window, we need to import Curses and instantiate it with the new win method. It takes two arguments. The first one is the number of rows and the second one is the number of columns which we want to save into constant variables. For our game to read keys and not display them without requiring the enter key to be pressed, we call the no echo and C break methods. We also want to make use of constant values for the keyboard provided by the module such as when pressing the page up, page down, home or arrow keys by passing the value 1 to the keypad method. Also, we don't want we don't need a blinking cursor, so we set curse set method to 0. Next, uh, we also want to initialize color pairs because we want to add colors to our game. Just copy the following codes. Next, uh, we define our game variables. 
we are also going to define two functions randomize speed and get new ball cord randomize speed returns a list of two integers with a random value of either negative 1 or 1 for this we also have to import random then we have our get new ball cord this returns a tuple for the new ball coordinate up next we display our welcome screen and wait for the player to press a key we accomplish this with clear method to clear the screen and border method to display a border the add string takes four arguments the first two is the position of our cursor in x and y coordinates the third argument is the text to be displayed and the last is the color and style of the text to be displayed get ch method will wait for the player to press a character on the keyboard and passing the value of one to no delay method unblocks get ch method okay i'm not going to go over the codes line by line anymore because the rest is pretty much self-explanatory so just go ahead and copy the codes these are all by the way just algorithm of the game and if you have any questions regarding what a specific line of code does or about the game in general please don't hesitate to post them in the comments section down below and I will do my best to answer them for you also if you have any Python curses module specific questions then you can always refer to the official documentation which I will also post the link on the description down below the last line of code wraps it all up it's just a method provided by the module to do all the dirty work and make sure our terminal won't be left in a funny state when we exit the game it takes a callable and the callable function that we're going to give it is our main function when you're done you can save the file by pressing control plus O and enter exit nano with control X then run the game by typing python xpong.py as you can see the AI is quite dumb so I welcome anyone who can help me improve please feel free to fork me on my github gist alright I guess that's all we have for now if you have any questions comments or suggestions please post it down below and be sure to keep me updated on your next project with Python Curses module. Please support my channel. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.